Make sure everybody is there. Yes. All right. We are live, everybody. Hi, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. This is Dr. Brooke Goldner, and you're here with Wellness Wednesday. It's Wednesday already. Um, I know the days have gone slowly after that holiday for those of you who are off. I know it has in my house. Um, but it's Wednesday, and what I do on Wednesday is public service. I come and I chat with all of you about your health and do what I can to make sure that you have the knowledge, you have the answers, you have the encouragement to do what you need to do to have a happy and healthy life. That's my goal, okay? So please go ahead and you can write your questions down in the comments here on Instagram and on YouTube and Facebook. Before we get started though, I do want to remind all of you that my gift to you over the holidays is my online classes are up for free right now through January 1st, because some of you might not know this, but the highest rate of deadly heart attacks actually happens on Christmas, uh, followed by New Year's. So we are heading into not just what is a wonderful and beautiful season, but it's also a fairly deadly season. And I, I know that's kind of a bummer to hear. Everybody looks forward to the holidays. And, and unfortunately, what people are looking forward to is not just the spiritual significance of the holidays. They're not just looking forward to family gathering. They're looking forward to what they're going to shove into this hole here in their face. And unfortunately, it can be really deadly. I used to work Christmas and the holidays all the time and uh, to let my colleagues have the day off. And it's busy. It's busy for a couple of reasons. One, all the chest pain. Two, uh, high rates of depression. So if you have any neighbors that are alone for the holidays, make sure that you check on them as well, because people who don't have family tend to get extremely depressed over the holidays. So if you know someone who's solo, maybe invite them over or check on them. But when it comes to your physical health, I want to make sure that you not only survive the holidays, but you even get healthier over the holidays. So make sure that you check it out. Go to goodbyelupus.com to see them. Um, I'm going to show this really quickly on the YouTube Facebook side. I could show it uh, on the Instagram side. I want you to imagine right now going to goodbyelupus.com. And when you go to goodbyelupus.com, what you'll do is you'll see there's a button on the front page that says watch classes free. So you're going to click the button, right? Then you'll see my class reversing uh, disease with supermarket foods. You're going to scroll down. When you scroll down, there'll be two options. You could buy lifetime access to the classes, or you can watch them for free right now by clicking on the little box. So if you click on the little box that says free now, you can go ahead and watch them. So make sure that you do that. Get them in. I always uh, want people to um, to make sure they feel some urgency because when there's no urgency, well, kind of let the time go by and you don't do anything, right? But now it's like, oh, we got to watch them by January 1st. So in case this hour with me is just not enough, and you're like, man, I wish I had four more hours, go ahead and check them out. So what it has is all the information from my book, Goodbye Lupus, The Six Steps Reversing Disease of Supermarket Foods. So it has my story, how, the three foods that make you sick, the three foods that are necessary for you to reverse your disease and dozens and dozens of case studies on reversing disease. Now I made these classes back in 2017. So, um, the, uh, but the, 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 the information holds up. Okay. So, um, you'll just notice that like my hair is here. That's how you know how, what year it is. <laughs> so, um, but make sure you check them out. It's, it's really life-saving information and I have released them online for free before and uh, I try to do it on a regular basis. And I always, always have people who have sent me messages saying that they completely heal the of diseases for free just by going to my Q&As and by watching my classes. So what's better than free, right? So all I want to see is you get well. That's my gift. Don't waste it. Make sure you do it. Have like a screening party with your friends. Make sure you do it and you get healthy, okay? Most important thing you can do is get the right information. Then once you have the information, you got to put it into effect. You have to take action on it. Okay. That part I can't do. <laughs> I can't do it for you. Then it would be a bestseller on my website, wouldn't it? If there was just like a, an option that you could click where you could just give me your body for a month and I'll feed it and exercise it for you and then return it to you at the end of the month, uh, all healthy. But uh, I can't do that yet. We don't have the technology, but if we do, I'll let you know about it. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and get to the questions. Instagram came up first today. So I'm going to Scroll down and see what Instagram wants to ask me. All right, let's see here. I do have good news as well. Where's my proof? Oh, my husband has it. 
the, we got the proof of my uh, new book, Goodbye Lupus, Hello Delicious, and it's going to be coming out soon. We're actually working on the final edits. You have to have the proof to do a final edit because staring at the file on the computer just does not give you what it really feels like to hold it in your hands and look at it. So we've had that and now we're doing all the final corrections and Leo, you're the best. Look at this <laughs> running and got it for me. Um, so this says proof across the front, but just so you can see, here's what the book looks like. Ah! So um, it, this is this proof bar won't, won't be there, um, but it's a uh, look at this. It's really beautiful. And I'm super, super excited actually um, by all of the amazing recipes and oh my gosh. So it's, uh, it's come along so, so well, and uh, we're almost there. Look at that. <laughs> so it is really exciting. We're very, very thrilled about it, and we are so close. Even birthday cake. Yeah. So it's awesome. I'm very excited about it, um, and we're just doing all the final touches now. So we will have it published for sure before Christmas. So everyone who's looking to get healthy, you will have the free classes, you will have a recipe book, and you will have no excuses. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's get to your questions. So thank you, Leo, for running and getting that, that book. It's awesome. All right. Leo is responsible for making me look so good. I'm editing my videos. He's amazing. All right, let's see here. Okay, so the first question I see here is from Manasser saying, uh, is your high nutrient smoothie and protocol good for fertility? Absolutely it is. Uh, we have definitely seen wonderful results when it comes to fertility and quite a number of people who were told they could not have children who got pregnant even during my group. We, we, we call them the oopsies. People think it's not possible and that it happens. Uh, it definitely is a really important thing for your fertility, for the health of your organs, uh, whether they're reproductive or otherwise. So yes, it's always a great idea. And hello, Tora. Let's see. We'll get another one from Instagram and then we'll travel over to YouTube and Facebook. All right. And then Pastor Reeser, thanks for everything you do. Can the protocol help with hemorrhoids? Well, I don't expect it to necessarily make the vasculature decrease in size, but what it can do is stop the constipation that usually causes hemorrhoids. So hemorrhoids are are uh, large blood vessels, veins that are in the rectum that are usually caused by straining from constipation. So when you stress and strain, you're pushing pressure down. Blood ve uh, veins don't have hard muscular walls like arteries do. So they're more likely to kind of get stretched out as they get pressure like that. And eventually those blood vessels can become painful or even create more issues with constipation. So if you can get your stool to be uh, looser and come through more easily, that's going to help a lot. Uh, now, some people have blood vessels that are already protruding or so painful uh, and, and engorge that really they need to go to a doctor to have something done for that. But they should be a lot better if you uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and change your diet in a way that you're going to have better bowel movements. So most common reason for constipation is dehydration. So if you make sure that you get that gallon of water in a day, especially if you're over 125 pounds, go ahead and get that gallon of water a day. When you watch my classes at goodbyelupus.com, I talk about how your fecal matter needs a nice lazy river to exit on. People don't realize that water is actually absorbed in your colon because you need that water to escort the stool out of your body. When you're dehydrated, you've got a dry river. Nothing's moving. It's stuck right? Very uncomfortable. So make sure you get that water to take up. And the other thing that helps is fiber, not from a powder, but from actual food. So most people find when they add things like our smoothies, that they're having bowel movements like never before, often multiple times a day. And if a lot of your diet comes from smoothie, it's probably going to be more mushy and green, and that moves more easily too. So in those ways, it can help that. All right, let's see what's going on over here with YouTube. Oh, and the first question is from Peter saying, will this help with chronic constipation? Ta -da! So, wow, twofer. Okay, um, next one. Let's see. So Mark wants to know, is GERD with a constantly open sphincter curable? Volume, raw food, fiber, fat, time between meals, limited ingestion. How do I implement the good biodiversity protocol? So if your esophageal sphincter is constantly open, so you might have heard the word sphincter before, some of you only for the one that's in your rectum, but we also have a sphincter in our esophagus, and that regulates food 
going from our esophagus into our stomach. So when food goes into your stomach, that sphincter should close. And that's, that keeps it from coming back up into the esophagus, right? We want food to go down and stay that way. But when there's damage to that sphincter and it's not working properly, we can have problems. So for some people, the problem is that it gets stuck closed and they have trouble and pain swallowing, right? And they might need to get something like Botox done to try to let the sphincter open up a bit. Right. The other problem people can have that Mark's talking about is when the sphincter is now always open. So if your sphincter is always open in your esophagus, you're always going to have reflux because there's nothing stopping the flow. Right. So what are things that you can do to limit it? You can totally do um, the goodbye autoimmune disease protocol. I mean, that you can always do. And you will have to have smaller meal size. You will make sure that you have to stay upright after meals because there's nothing keeping the food from coming back up except your posture, right? As soon as you start to tilt back, then things can run back up and burn into the esophagus. So, um, but whether or not it will actually help solve the problem, that really depends on the cause of the problem. Is your sphincter open because of inflammation uh, because of some kind of autoimmunity? Is it related to other things like scleroderma? So, uh, so that part, I don't have an answer to, and I never give answers when I don't know. Uh, sometimes I don't know is the answer. So what I do know is this will get you healthier. It'll improve your overall health. If you have an autoimmune or inflammatory component that's contributing to this problem, then it will help with that as well. But whether or not it will cure this condition of your sphincter being stuck open, I don't know, but I hope that you'll tell me uh, if you go ahead and find out. Okay. So, all right, guys. So you never know what kind of medical education you're going to get in a day, right? Now you're an expert in the esophagus and swallowing, right? Okay. Let me see here. Um, all right. Danielle Collier wants to know, uh, I want to know if the protocol would work for schizophrenia and bipolar disorders in children. So I have, I have experience working with uh, nutrition and mental health. I mean, obviously I have a background in, in psychiatry as well. Um, I don't have a ton of case studies though for schizophrenia because oftentimes with schizophrenia, uh, there are thought disorders that can prevent people from fully really understanding and embracing nutrition. Now there have been studies done to show, for example, that dairy makes, uh, makes psychosis worse. And I did have one patient with schizophrenia, who was very, very high functioning, who went on a plant-based diet. He wasn't even doing the full hypernourishment. He did have some smoothies and raw foods, but he mostly just switched to plant-based eating with no meat or dairy. And he was actually able to get off of his antipsychotic medication. Now, the problem was he'd been off his medication for a couple months, was doing really well, went camping over the weekend where he had burgers. And by Monday, he was paranoid again and ended up back in the hospital. So it was extremely effective. But one big dose of the weekend of the wrong foods and he was feeling badly again. So his decision after that was to keep a super low dose of antipsychotic on board and try to commit better to his diet. Now, this is a guy in his young, uh, early 20s. But there's a lot of evidence to suggest or there is evidence. I don't know if it's a lot. Yeah, but there's definitely evidence to suggest from my experience and from what research has been done that food plays a major component and can be helpful. So in a child, I would definitely be doing everything possible because we don't want I mean, when you've got a psychotic illness, the medicines we use to suppress the psychosis also can create long term issues like Parkinson's. So the less medicine we need and the better people can do with less medicine, the less side effects they'll have long term, the healthier they'll be. So I would definitely uh, you put those children on a plant based diet. I would include hypernourishment. Bipolar disorders is interesting. There's less research in that. However, there have been studies done looking at how omega threes work as mood stabilizers. So having high doses of omega three in addition to the other nourishment can be a great help in minimizing the need for medications in kids and adults with bipolar disease. Uh, they've also found them to be, uh, in one study, as effective, omega-3s, as effective as a stimulant medication for attention deficit. So I've helped people with child and adults attention deficit using nutrition to help their brains work better. I mean, when it comes down to it, this thing you got here, right, this neck attaches your head to your body. And so how well nourished your body is, is going to affect how well nourished and functional your brain is. And so that's an important thing to remember and always an important thing to try, uh, even with mental health issues. 
All right, that was a new question, so that's fun. All right, let's see what Facebook has to say, and then I'll, I'll come back Instagram. All right, let's see. All right. All right, Faye, Faye, Faye says, my fingernails have been curving down around the tips of my fingers for a couple years, and it seems to be accelerating. Why? Is this a nutritional deficiency? 55 years old, been plant-based for seven years, no known diseases, been hyper-nourishing for a year, and I noticed healing in surprising areas. My eyesight, continence, skin, and hair. My labs were described as exceptional by the doctor. What's with my nails? Faye, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with your nails. So my first question would be, does anyone in the family have this? Sometimes there's these weird conditions that people have genetically uh, where like in some families, nails flatten with age and there's no deficiencies or anything, but it's just like a flattening that's seen. Um, so I'm wondering if there's anything else that if you have zero health problems and feel amazing, if there's something else driving it, I would be curious though, that, I mean, it sounds like you feel great. Your labs look great. You're not having any issues. If you think it could be nutrition related, you could always go on a stint of doing the goodbye lupus protocol and exercising and seeing if it makes a difference. Now it would take a while to see the difference because the difference would show up in the base of the nail, right? It would take a while to, to, to grow it long enough to see uh, how it does around the end. But, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure about that. That is it. You guys have some different stuff for me today. I'm not sure what it is that's causing it, but uh, if you want to see if it's anything nutrition related, you can't get more nourished than doing my goodbye lupus protocol. Everything you're eating is nourishment, right? But if everything else is healthy, your, your organs are all working beautifully and you feel great, then I at least wouldn't worry about it. It might be uh, part of your genetics, but if it's getting worse, there must be something behind it. I'm going to think on it, see if I come up with anything else. But off the top of my head, uh, I just am not sure about that. Sorry about that, Faye, but I'm very happy for you that your eyesight is better and, and your labs are superb. I mean, that's wonderful. And here's the other thing. So as my brain is working on it, usually uh, when you're super nourished, what you'll see especially is the benefits will be fastest in the areas that grow the fastest, right? So in most of us, what's growing the fastest would be our nails and our hair, right? Um, our skin also has pretty high turnover rate. So if your hair is growing beautifully and your skin looks amazing, then I would say that you're incorporating nourishment really well. Now, usually that also translates into nails growing really quickly as well. I know I have to clip for my nails every couple of days just because I don't want them long and they grow so quickly. Whereas when I was sick, they were they would just bend and split and I could never grow them. So yeah, I, that's why I'm thinking it might be something else in your nails besides nutrition, because if you were malnourished, you would not have all those great results with your eyesight getting better and your hair growing in beautifully. So it might be something else, it might be something else, not nutrition related. Okay. Sorry. I just want to sit and think about that. Right guys. It's interesting. All right. Um, Kenna crew Wallachy, can I survive just on hyper nourishing smoothies when I get enough calories? As long as you had enough of them, yes, absolutely. So sometimes people feel like they're going to be at a deficit if they just are consuming smoothies. But you have to remember that just because you blended it doesn't mean it's not a meal, right? So for example, if you ate a big salad, that's a meal, right? If you blend the salad, it's still a meal. If you Just like if you had a sandwich, that's a meal. If you blended the sandwich, it'd be nasty, but it would be a meal, right? So as long as you're eating to fullness and you're following the guidelines, uh, then yes, you're getting everything that your body needs and actually more than you've probably ever given it before. So most people enjoy getting to chew on some things, but there are some folks, especially people who are sick and busy, who prefer to just do the smoothies and water until they're well, and then they can start incorporating other foods as they feel uh, ready for it and feeling better. But absolutely you can. All right, let's see here. All right, let's come back to Instagram. Excuse me while I scroll down. <laughs> Second here. All right, at least there's some overlap with some of these questions. So I have to get past the uh, all the hellos and the updates. I'm getting there. Uh, update on your recipe book. Just gave you one. All right. Talked about the hemorrhoids. Um, So 
I am working on it. All right, Catherine Fox wants to know, does a green smoothie help with thrush candida? Thank you. So if you've got thrush, that means you have an infection. You've got an infection of yeast. So in my experience, what works best in getting rid of a yeast infection is actually taking something to kill the yeast, whether it's a supplement or a yeast antifungal medicine. Um, yeast, once they're growing and thriving, they're happy. Uh, so usually we have to kill them off so that we can then replace them with healthy bacteria through our probiotics and such. So will the smoothie help with that? It'll help your immune system. So if you have thrush, usually that means your immune system is low, either because of autoimmune disease or because of the medications they use to treat autoimmune disease, which also uh, decrease your ability to have your immune system work properly. So if it is because you have low immunity or autoimmunity, then the smoothie will help you fight back. But again, once those thrush are living there, once that thrush infection is happening, you might need to do something to, uh, to break down uh, all of those guys and kill them off a bit. Now, if you do have a yeast infection overgrowth, then you're going to want to do it without the fruit or with super low sugar fruit like berries because yeast thrive on sugars, even natural sugars from fruit. Um, that does make it less palatable for some folks. Some folks like it. I've actually had smoothie that a friend made. He had a lot of allergies. So he just does it with like spinach and water, maybe some lemon or mint in there. And it's, I was surprised it was actually pretty tasty. Um, but for most folks, they end up switching to salads and things if they are not able to get the fruit in. But um, yeah, so for those, those, those would be my tips for that one. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, Lamarne professionals, how did you deal with cravings and bad eating habits when you first started getting healthy? So for me, um, it, it wasn't hard to do because one, I am pretty stubborn when I make a decision for myself. Uh, it's, it's the only reason I was able to get through medical school while having lupus is when I set a goal, nobody's stopping me. <laughs> So I might look like I'm small, but I've got fierce will. So if I have made a decision to do something, I'm going at it with everything I have. And so when I made the decision to change my diet, I was getting married soon. So I was going to do whatever I had to do to burn that fat layer off and get myself ripped for that wedding. Maybe some of you can relate men and women getting ready for your wedding. You want to look your best. So I had, so I was motivated. The other thing that really helped, so one, I had a clear vision of my goal. My goal was a strapless mermaid dress on the beach in Hawaii, All right? Very clear goal that I wanted to get to, right? Number two, I was busy fulfilling my purpose and my passion. So when I did this, I was an intern in my first year post-medical school, and I was so thrilled because... I mean, I was told I was going to die at 16 and there I was in my 20s, actually a doctor. It was just an amazing thing for me. You know, at that point I was 28 years old and I did it. I almost died a few times, but I did it. So I was so thrilled. Everybody else was um, complaining about the hours and, and being exhausted and overworked. I'm like, did you look up what medical school residency was going to be because it sounds like you didn't know what you're getting into. I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. So I don't complain about stuff that I actually signed up for. <laughs> it's like I signed up for this. I'm doing it right. But um, it was for me, it was so exciting to actually be doing that. And it was funny because most of the patients I treated weren't as sick as I was, but it was just a, it was a beautiful thing. So I was so filled with purpose and passion that every day when I woke up super early in the morning, that I was going to work and I was actually a physician and I was, you know, living my dream. So the fact that I was uh, busy and I was doing something that fulfilled me when you're emotionally fulfilled by your life, you don't need to be, you don't need to be entertained by your food. It didn't matter to me what, what I was eating. I wanted, I was happy already. So, uh, so again, um, I had a clear goal in my head. I made sure that my life was busy and fulfilling and that way I could just eat what I needed to. And the other thing I did was exercise. So when you exercise, you actually release endorphins, dopamine, which gives you all these great chemicals running through your nervous system that makes you feel good and happy. 
uh, so that you don't need to rely on sugar and other crap in order to make you happy. So all of those things combined really made it so it wasn't hard for me. I can say the only times that I tripped and fell and my face landed on a donut, because it happened a few times, okay, was overnight shifts. So when I would work overnight shifts at the hospital, um, the nurses that did the overnight shift used to all bring in sweets that would keep, I think they stay up all night on sugar. That's what they did. So everyone would bring in like a plate of cookies, a plate of donuts. I mean, just, it was constant. It was like, it was a, it was just a, just a whole wall of sugar that I'd have to walk through every time I had to see a patient. So I learned that I was the most vulnerable when it was like three in the morning and they page me and I, you know, I'd be sleeping in the call bed and they page me and I get up and I'm just kind of groggy and I walk out. And, and as I'm walking towards the patient, I'm passing, you know, cookies and donuts and cakes. Oh my cookies and donuts and cakes. <laughs> and what I found out was if I broke off a piece of a donut, because a donut was my favorite. If I broke off a piece of the donut and threw it in my mouth on the way to see that patient, it didn't matter if I was seeing that patient for 20 minutes or two hours, I would come back, finish that donut and eat another one after that. So what I learned was that I can't have a bite of a donut or I'm going to eat two donuts. So what I learned was when I was when they would page me at 3 a.m., I would bring my water bottle. And I would walk past the sugar with the water bottle, just with the straw in my mouth, just walk right on by. Because I knew if I didn't taste it, I would forget about it. And that's what would happen. The moment I was past the desserts and seeing patients, I totally forgot about it. But if I tasted it, no way. So all of those things matter too. So listen, I'm not perfect. I, I still tripped and fell sometimes. 3 a.m. and donuts, that, that happens. And when it did happen, I still finished my other food because you need that food as well, right? In fact, you need it more once you've had crap. Um, so the other part of it is making sure that you don't do all or nothing. Like I didn't go, well, I already had a donut. Might as well just eat junk the rest of the day. I go, I ate a donut. Now I still need to eat my vegetables. I still need to drink my water. In fact, I need to even more than ever. So instead of an all or nothing mentality, making sure I had an and mentality that if I messed up, I still get to keep going. And then I need a game plan so that I don't mess up again. Now, when I went to other places, I always stayed prepared. So I did have friends. I had one friend that would have like karaoke party every weekend. It was it was BYOB um, and it was BYOS, bring your own snacks, right? So I knew also like my husband, and I love to sing karaoke. So we would go every weekend, but we would bring like unsweetened iced tea and one of those big veggie platters from Costco, but we would throw away the ranch and throw, put a guacamole in there. And my husband and I would eat veggies and drink iced tea and sing karaoke. And we had a blast. They call us the healthy couple, right? Um, so being prepared when you go out, that also really works. You know, you have to make sure that you're ready and make sure people know what you're doing. You know, like I didn't want people to tell me, I would say like, yeah, no thanks. Don't even tempt me. I'm happy with what I'm doing. So this is, by the way, if you start listening to it, you can understand even where the Goodbye Autoimmune Disease Protocol came from, right? If you've read my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, majority of that book is all of the emotional work that you need to do to just stick to the Goodbye Lupus Protocol, right? Dealing with self-sabotage and really getting crystal clear on your why and your motivation and how to stay motivated and how to deal with your emotions so that you don't eat to suppress your emotions, all of that kind of stuff. How to do a game plan so that if you do mess up, that you can get back on track again, right? So all of those things are necessary. But the most important thing has to be really that first thing I said, which is you need to be committed, right? Because you're either looking for a way through or you're looking for a way out. That's the human mind. So when I was committed to this, I was always looking for the way through, not the way out. If you're not committed, you're always looking for a way out. And believe me, there's exit doors everywhere. You can just, you can find them. They're lit up like on an airplane, right? But you don't want to get up before you reach your destination. So once you're committed, then all of the answers are actually become pretty, um, pretty available to your mind. Like they become pretty obvious. Like, oh, I know what to do. I'll just bring veggies with me. Right. So clear in your why, make sure that you're doing something that makes you feel passionate and happy and fulfilled. So you're not looking for food to do it. Um, make sure you're doing self-care to stay fulfilled as well. Exercise will help you with getting those dopamine and endorphins. So you don't feel the need to seek it out out of foods. Right. And be committed, be stubborn about getting your health back and you will always find your way through and get answers. And if you're really struggling with it, if you, if you find that your food addiction is so bad that, that even with all that advice, you can't do it 
that's why we created things like rapid recovery. Like I have a rapid recovery group starting January 12th. And in, when we're in that group every single day, we keep people motivated. We stay on top of your diet. We stay on top of your sleep, your self-care, your self-talk, you get live coaching, right? And many people in that group have said they never would have finished it had they not done it because their food addictions were so severe that the voice in their head kept taking them out of the game and being able to get coaching every day kept them in it. So if you need support to get through it, then you do that. Cause by the end of the six weeks, you no longer are addicted anymore. And then it's so much easier to think clearly and do what you need to do. So, all right, those are all the advice. And that's an important thing because I know right now heading into the holidays, there's a lot of you that are like, huh, you're thinking your, your, your holiday parties are just like walking through that nurse's station was for me, where it's just like an assault of all the things that you know you shouldn't be eating. Um, so you have to go in there stubborn and prepared and also make sure that your mind uh, is full of the good information that you need. Somebody asked me that today. She's dealing with food addiction and, uh, and diabetes and she's really sick. And she asked me, you know, how do I, you know, we, we usually have all these food for Christmas that I, I really want to eat. I want to eat the pork and this and that. How do I do it? I said, well, you have to actually ask yourself, do I want to say goodbye to diabetes or do I want pork? That's the real thing. It's not, do I want pork or do I want salad? Do I want to say goodbye to diabetes or do I want pork, right? Do I want to have kidney failure or do I, or, or do I want to have pork and kidney failure or do I want to have healthy kidneys, right? Like you have to choose kidneys or pork, health or pork, right? So, and so people usually give themselves the wrong comparison. They say, uh, do I want smoothie or do I want a sandwich, right? Do I want a burger and fries or do I want a salad? That's not the right thing. You have to ask yourself whether you'd rather eat that junky thing or have your health because that's the actual choice you're making and you have to keep that front of mind or else you're going to be making decisions based off of the wrong comparison. Okay, let's get back over here to YouTube. All right, let's see here. All right. Uh, Diana Bananas, thank you so much. I wish you the best as well. Diana reversed her MS on our program and she's still thriving and looking amazing. I always see you here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Elizabeth wants to know, can any of the protocols, including just hypernourishing, help an inflamed SA side joint? I think you meant to ask me for a different, a specific, I think this was a speech to text error, but can it help an inflamed, let's just say any joint, uh, an inflamed joint? Potentially. I mean, if you want to reverse inflammation in a joint, you've got to think about two parts. You've got to do, not do anything that makes it worse and give your body what it needs to get it better. So what makes it worse? Stress, poor sleep, and inflammatory foods, right? Inflammatory foods. I don't even like to give them the food label, right? Uh, what does it take to get better? Well, good self-care and good moods, right? And eating the hypernourishment foods. Now, for some people, adding hypernourishment to an otherwise non-inflammatory plant-based diet, adding self-care, good sleep is enough to get rid of it. And if not, you go into the full goodbye with this protocol and you get it done. All right, let's see here. Um, is nutritional yeast okay in the Goodbye Lupus Protocol? Yes, it helps a lot too, makes things taste good. Uh, there's some people who react to it, but most people don't. So we haven't had much problem with that at all. Okay, uh, Zerika, can you heal histamine intolerance? Can you do it while eating histamine on the Goodbye Immune Disease Protocol? I have had people who have reversed histamine intolerance, but usually while they're on the protocol, we stick with low histamine foods because why irritate your immune system while you're trying to calm it down? So you would do a low histamine protocol. Let's see here. Let's look at Facebook. All right, let's see. All right, Catherine Cooper. Hi, Dr. Goldner. I have APS, so antiphospholipid syndrome. It's a clotting disorder. I'm trying to reverse it as quickly as possible. Is one cup of flaxseed in my smoothies a good amount, or should I do more? Should I eat kale, spinach, and chard more than broccoli and cauliflower? Can I count the water in my smoothie towards my daily water intake? So one, it goes away on this program. Uh, I've seen people completely eliminate APS even within the six weeks of my group. I myself eliminated it, and it's such a good thing because I had many strokes from it in medical school. So it is definitely nice not to have that scary disease anymore. Um, so uh, a cup of flax seeds is a lot and should be plenty. <laughs> that's one. Uh, your gut is awesome that you can tell me that. Um, 
to eat whichever cruciferous high nutrient vegetables you like best. All of those that you, that you named are wonderful and they work. So you just use the ones you like the best. And yes, the water in your smoothie counts towards your daily water intake. Okay, let's see where else Facebook's asking. All right. So Elsie has a multi, multi-level question here. So, uh, hi, Dr. Brooke, love you. Thank you so much. Uh, would you like to know if the protocol helps with eyes? Uh, cataract, as doctor said, mom to be operated would love her to heal and reverse this with your protocol. So it definitely helps with eyes. As you saw with someone else posted today that her vision got better. We normally see that. So vision gets better. Eye inflammation gets better. We have multiple cases of reversing glaucoma. Everyone I've worked with has, with glaucoma has reversed it. Um, so all of that. Cataracts, I don't have any cases for so I wish that I could tell you that it would reverse cataracts, but I don't have cases. And so I never will say yes, if I haven't personally seen that result happen. So I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to reverse the cataract. Let me know if she has good results with that. Um, a friend has fibromyalgia. Do you, do you have patients cured with this protocol? Absolutely. I recently did a rapid recovery program with someone who's had fibromyalgia and she had chronic pain for nine years, chronic pain and fatigue. And before she even worked with me, she just added the smoothies to her otherwise vegan diet and her pain went away. So she went, oh my gosh. And so she, uh, her doctor actually referred her to me. She had the smoothies, her pain went away. She was still dealing with fatigue. So she did my four week rapid recovery. By the end of that, her energy was through the roof and she actually decided to throw out her stove because if raw eating feels this good, why ever cook again? Uh, most people don't do that. They find that uh, cooking, you know, it's easy and, and they like it. But for her, it was like, yeah, if this works, I'm, I'm in. So yes, absolutely helps with that as well. Um, all right. All right. So there you go. I'll see. Let's see. Okay. Oh, so time to come back to Instagram. All right. So Jilly Johansson, how do I get flax and chia seeds in if I don't like the smoothies? So you have some options there. Number one, you can use cold pressed flaxseed oil. Just eat a few tablespoons a day. You can put that into your foods. You can put it in a little water and drink it. You can drink it off of a spoon if you want. Personally, I find it kind of nasty, so I'd rather have it in my smoothies, but you can do that. The other thing you can do is you can make a, like a chia or flax uh, pudding. So basically you would blend up the flax seeds with either water or unsweetened almond milk, something like that, blend it up. And then you can go ahead and eat it. You can let it gel up into a pudding if you want, throw some slices of banana and berries and, and eat it that way. I mean, there's there's lots of ways that you can do it and get it done. If you do it with water, you're not going for flavor, you're going for utility, right? Um, a lot of times people would like to mix it with like unsweetened almond milk and make a little, little uh, dessert for themselves. Okay, let's see here. I'm not, I'm not sure what that one means. So, <laughs> uh, okay, let me see here. Sorry. Instagram gives me a lot of noise between questions. So I have to kind of scroll and find them. Um, Carissa says, Did, do you ever take shots of flax oil to cancel out a bad meal with, um, with seed oil? So I don't anymore, but I definitely used to. Uh, so at this point, I feel really comfortable that I have a well-balanced immune system. Considering that I've been lupus-free for 18 years, I've never had a relapse. Um, my cholesterol's in the 150s. I don't get sick. I mean, I don't get flus, colds, anything like that. I just, it's extremely rare. And when there is a flu or cold that comes around, it's gone within 24 hours and there's almost no symptoms. It's just my immune system is really good. So right now, even if I have a handful of seeds or I eat something recreational, I don't, I don't go and do that. Now, when I was first getting well, I absolutely did. And uh, it's actually kind of funny because, so, all right, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you the tea on this. So when, uh, when I did fall off plan, besides the incidents with the nurses, um, every once in a while, usually I think it was about my menstrual cycle, Sometimes I'd have this peanut butter craving and I'd put like a scoop of peanut butter in my mouth, 
right? But then I would freak out and go, omega-6. And I would actually grab the bottle for the omega-3 oil. And I would just, <laughs> I would just put it until my cheeks were full. And then I'd swallow it. And then I'd feel relieved. And then the funny thing is, my husband would come in and go, oh, me too. And he would chug it too. I'm not saying we're normal. This is very strange stuff. And I'm not saying you have to do that. But since Carissa asked the question, absolutely, I did that. Um, where I said, okay, you know, this is, it's just plain nuts. There was not skippy or anything with sugar or anything, but I knew that I was offsetting my uh, omega-6 pathway. And so I, I felt compelled to take the antidote and I used to do that. I don't need to anymore, but I do recommend for people, you don't have to drink it. You can literally just add some more to your smoothie. But remember back then I didn't even know about smoothies. So I was actually drinking like tablespoons of the oil and then eating the vegetables. So that was the best way I knew how to fix it. Now I would just say, put an extra tablespoon or two in your, in your smoothie and fix it that way. But yes, yes, I have done that. I admit it. Um, <laughs> it's disgusting though, to just drink it straight. I'm, I have clients that love it. Like they, they love pouring it all over their vegetables as a dressing. So if you do love it, that's wonderful. Enjoy it. But uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. It was just, uh, it was just to try to undo my, my excess peanut butter intake at that moment. Okay. Uh, Janet Diaz, you guys are learning all this, all this stuff about me today, right? <laughs> Janet Diaz, what do you suggest for all raw on smoothies when it's very cold weather? Well, your nutrition requirements don't change just because the weather changes. And I know people wished it did. You know, I get this question a lot because I see people in Canada, they're cold places where you go, come on, you know, it's winter. Can I just cook everything? you're not going to get the results. So really the only thing you can do is just change how you keep yourself warm, right? So listen, I'm in Texas now, so it doesn't really get cold here. Even when we think it's cold, it's not really that cold. But as it gets cooler, especially if I just had a nice cold smoothie, sometimes I get cold, especially I don't have a lot of body fat. I get cold more easily, right? So what I have here is my smoothie sweater. So if I'm drinking a smoothie and I get cold, I put a sweater on. And then I feel warm again, right? So, um, so that's really all you can do. You put your warm socks on, you put on your sweater, you sit by the fire or the heat or whatever, but you still need to get the nutrition in. Now you can do other things to warm up, right? You can make some uh, decaf tea. You can have hot water with lemon. I was just talking to someone this morning that said, when it's cold, can I heat my water? Absolutely. You want to warm it up, put a squeeze of lemon in there. Perfectly fine. Um, but it doesn't change the nutrition requirements. You still need the nutrition. Now, smoothies are best cold. Vegetables can be at room temperature though. So if you'd rather eat salads or something like that, you can totally do that. Um, but cooking the food, you won't just won't get that result. You won't get the benefit. And that's what I want for you is to get that benefit. Okay, let's go over here to the YouTube side of things. Let's see. I, uh, how much vitamin D do you recommend? So uh, I was sad to see that there's some recent controversy around vitamin D when there shouldn't be. Whenever, um, whenever I see that, I know people aren't operating off of results, but theories. And uh, I just think it's a horrible public disservice to teach people what you think rather than what you know from experience. Uh, what I know from experience about vitamin D is that when people's D levels are low, their immune systems don't work properly. And I've seen it in action, actually. That's what raised my awareness of D, actually, was in practice. Had someone who'd been uh, lupus-free for years, normal labs for years. And then suddenly, uh, one of the antiphospholipid antibodies was positive out of nowhere. Nothing else positive, inflammation levels low. She was on a maintenance diet. And the only other abnormality was low vitamin D. And I went, huh, D is involved in immune function. I wonder if we just superdose you in vitamin D and don't change anything about your diet, what would happen? What happened is six weeks later, her D was normal and that antibody was gone. So then I dove into PubMed to look at the uh, any connections between anti-cardiolip and antiphospholipid antibodies and low vitamin D. And sure enough, low vitamin D levels are associated with higher autoimmune antibody levels. And that's what I saw in practice. That's what I saw in the studies. That made sense. Um, so we have found not just for my own practice, but other practices, case studies and research that absolutely low D levels cause people to have a lot of problems. It can be problems with your skin, uh, problems with testosterone levels, problems with your immune system's ability to function properly. So you need to have proper D levels. So what D level do I recommend? I recommend people get up over 40 
All right. I have not seen people have problems once they get over 40. So that's my goalpost. Now I have seen other folks who recommend 70 or higher. I just, in terms of the results I've seen in my practice, once people get over 40, I don't see those problems anymore. So that's my goal. Uh, the way that you restore vitamin D levels and really everybody should get tested if you can. And if you can't get tested, I know some places where they have socialized medicine, it's an expensive test. And they just won't run it. Assume it's low and do a loading dose anyway. Okay, so you do a loading dose is 50,000 IU and you can either do 50,000 IU once a week and then retest it in like two months. And if it's normal, then you cut back to like 2000 to 4000 a day and that should keep you where you are. A lot of times people are told to take a D supplement, but they're not told how to take it. And doctors don't know how to take it because it's not like we're trained in that in medical school. So when we see a low D level, it's like, I don't know, take a supplement. How much? Not sure. Well, and when I wanted to know how much, I looked at the studies to look at what does it take to actually effectively raise D levels. And it showed that you need to have a loading dose of 50,000 IU to effectively raise D levels. So you can either do 50,000 IU once and then take 2,000 to 4,000 a day, and that should work just fine. Or you can do 50,000 once a week until it's normal and then take that amount to, to continue it. So that's what I've seen work for D. All right, let's see. All right. All right. Welcome to Mika. So this is our first live chat. Um, Mario, will the program fix psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis? I've been doing the program for about four weeks. The inflammation has been better. My pains drastically decreased, but my skin doesn't improve. Yes. Uh, I've had great results for both of those conditions, psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis. So I would say if your inflammation is coming down, your pain's getting better, you're probably on your way. All right. Sometimes the skin comes along after realize all the nutrition that you're taking in is being used to repair damage. And usually what I've seen is that the body will repair internal damage first. So if your arthritis is going away, inflammation is coming down and your skin's still not budging, you're healing. You're just healing internally first. Right. If it continues on where everything goes away and your skin's still stuck, then I'll start to look to see if there's anything else that's irritating you that could be affecting your skin. But I would say if it's already starting to get better, keep going. Um, and make sure you're going all out in the program. And uh, so things like uh, doing the full goodbye lupus protocol, goodbye autoimmune disease protocol to make sure you're optimizing your ability to heal. Okay. And Shamra People says, is it okay to have peanut butter, dates, bacon bits, and sesame seed oil? Uh, I'd like to add these for flavor, but I don't want to cheat myself. I would say no to all of those things. Okay. Let's see. Facebook. All right. Uh, Catherine wants to know, can protocol help a little bit with an optical nerve stroke? My dad lost about 50% of his vision after his optical stroke. So most likely that will depend on how recent the stroke was. I've talked about before, I had a client who had signed up for my four week rapid recovery program for metabolic issues, diabetes, weight loss. And on the third day of our program, he went to the hospital to go get a cardiac cath procedure. And during the procedure, he had a stroke. So they dislodged the blood clot when they were doing the procedure and he had a stroke. And so that was the first time I ever worked with someone who had an acute stroke like that day. Like he, he had a stroke right there with while we were just started to work together. So when he got back, they discharged him fairly quickly and uh, thankfully, and he decided to keep going. I thought he was going to quit. Like he just had a stroke, whatever. He said, no, if God wanted me to have a stroke while I'm working with you, then I'm doing this. So I was like, okay. So he was focused. So we went all out. And when he went to the neurologist two weeks after the stroke and they repeated the MRI, they said it looked like he'd been healing for over two months. They couldn't believe how much healing he'd done in such a short period of time. So that was my first time being able to see in real time, the nervous system be able to repair itself in rapid recovery with me. So, um, so we know that nerves can heal. Listen, I've helped people reverse MS. Uh, we've had two people with ALS do my programs recently, and both of them were able to reverse their most recent symptoms, even within the first six weeks. So we've seen nervous system issues get better. Um, now, the question is really, is that stroke already healed in terms of scar tissue, or is it still something that can be healed? So your body doesn't heal scar tissue because it's considered already healed, right? Once I have a scar, the body's done healing it, it's over. So I don't know if that scar tissue in his optic nerve is already done or whether it's still recent enough that we can flood you with nourishment and make progress, but it's worth doing either way. So I hope your dad's doing better and let me know. Okay. Let's see here. What time is it? All right. Still have time to keep cooking. Let's see. Let's see. 
Maria says, do you think you would have healed your lupus just the same had you went raw vegan with unlimited fruit or even another whole food diet? I believe you said prior to this, you were junk food vegetarian. Uh, no, or I would teach that. So um, I'm very results oriented and uh, and I teach what works. So if you know my background and I, I teach it in my classes that are online right now, um, my husband and I were very, very cautious to make sure that when we released the protocol, it was it was scientific and reproducible. And when we added fruit, especially at high levels, we didn't get those results. When we added cooked food, we didn't get those results. The only way we were able to get that rapid reproducible result is with what became the Goodbye Lupus Protocol. Now, would I have gotten healthier by done, doing raw vegan with unlimited fruit or eating another whole foods diet? Heck yeah. <laughs> Rather than eating all the eggs and cheese, absolutely I would have gotten healthier. Would I have completely eliminated lupus? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so, but uh, but I definitely would have been a ton healthier, and it would and it's a great start. Listen, there are a lot of people who get healthier without being as extreme as what I teach, right? There are some people who don't need that. Uh, just like you know, when it comes to weight loss, there are some people who just need to lose a few pounds, and and any exercise will do it for them. And then there's other folks that really have a lot to lose, or they have a lot of metabolic issues on top of that. They need to be more strict. They need to to be uh, more rigid about their approach, right? If you can get that result and get a remission without having to do as extreme an approach as my protocol, I am so thrilled for you, right? Uh, but if you want something that you know is going to work, then this is what you want to do, right? So that's just really depends, right? This is, we wanted it to be re reproducible consistently. And I think it's a really important thing. I, I was thinking about this when my group was finishing, because at the end of every rapid recovery group, we do a live Zoom meeting where everyone in the group can come on and share their results. And it's just wonderful. And it takes us all day to get everybody in to share the results. And what's beautiful about that program is that when people do it, they get better, right? It, it is, you know, not everybody who joins will do it no matter how much I want them to. I can't make people come to Zoom meetings and get coaching. I can't make people post, right? But majority of people do participate and they get wonderful, amazing results. And I was talking to my husband and said, you know, when they're testing medicines, if someone can get even a five or 10% improvement in symptoms, they start selling that drug. And yet we can get every person who's doing this right. I mean, to get some improvement in their health. It was so funny because in our final meeting, there were two people that thought they weren't getting results because they, they are like still dealing with fatigue issues. Right. And so we're like, oh, out of our whole group, there's two people who, who are on plan and they weren't getting results. And we're like, oh, we're really going to have to see if they have a food allergy or something. At the final live meeting, both of them had just gotten their blood test results. One of them completely healed her fatty liver disease. And the other one had healed her Hashimoto's and her, her TSH had come down dramatically. So both of them actually had healed. They just didn't even realize it because uh, they hadn't gotten those labs to prove it. So we're like, oh, okay, well, we still got, so then everybody who participated got their results. That's perfect, right? So it's, it's really that good. So if you are sick and you want to know for sure you're going to get better, you do that good by lupus protocol. Because what we found is if people aren't getting results, it's either because their stress and lifestyle habits are undoing their ability to experience it, right? So if you have poor sleep, high stress, depression, anxiety, then it's going to be harder for you to get those feel those results because those things are inflammatory. So it's like you're eating perfectly, but you're creating an inflammation from your lifestyle. So there's a competition going on. People who are stressed and anxious, they deplete all of their energy. So they feel exhausted all the time, even if they're eating well because of that. So that's why I help people overcome their stress and anxiety and depression during rapid recovery, because if I can help them with those things, they can feel the benefits of the nutrition, right? The other thing, which is actually less common, is someone has a food sensitivity. And we can determine that when we're in the program. If by the third week we're not starting to see changes, we actually will start working on food sensitivities. That's how effective it is, is we'll just be like, oh, you're not feeling anything yet? All right. If your stress isn't there, then let's look at food sensitivities because we expect people to get results. That's amazing, right? And so it's just, it's, I wish you could sit in on those sessions, but people want the privacy and we can't do it. Um, but it is really that effective. So go ahead and try either of those things, Maria. If you want to try like raw vegan with unlimited fruit, or you want to try just whole food plant-based with hyper nurse, do it. And if you get results, celebrate like crazy. And if you don't, then you'll know that you can do this and that should get you better. All right. All righty, righty, righty. Let's see here. 
time is it? All right, we're good. Okay, sorry. No, I should be on Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Oh, no. I lost an earbud. <laughs> okay. All right. Hopefully you can still hear me. Let's see. All right, Carissa, Christina said, I've decreased my thyroid meds massively. Can the protocol cause thyroid to work better? I don't have Hashimoto's. So yes, in our experience, uh, most of the time people have Hashimoto's when they have low thyroid. In our experience, people's thyroid function gets better. We see TSH is just crashing down when people have uh, low thyroid. Uh, when people have uh, hyper or overactive thyroid, we see them go the other way. It's been really beautiful to see that happen. So as long as you have thyroid that is inflamed but not scar tissue, then you should see that function get better. Sometimes it's interesting because normally, like in rapid recovery, normally I see improvement in the thyroid by the end of the group, definitely, but usually even by midway through people who are on meds will start feeling too jittery because their thyroid is working again. And so therefore they're taking too much thyroid hormone. So that's wonderful. Sometimes people are afraid that if they take the medicine that their thyroid won't make it. No, nope, it, it actually does. Um, but I recently had someone, which I'm going to see her today, uh, where she did my protocol. She got rid of her Hashimoto's, but she'd had, had and we, we showed it by no more antibodies. So her Hashimoto's were antibodies were gone. So goodbye Hashimoto's, but she still needed some thyroid hormone, but she'd had low thyroid for decades. And then suddenly a few months ago, out of nowhere, she started feeling sick. And so because it was kind of out of nowhere, we thought maybe she has a flu or something. And she went and got her labs drawn and her TSH was like 0.3. And they're talking about, whoa, out of nowhere, your thyroid just started working. So we called it the zombie thyroid. It just raw, just came back online uh, even many months after she had uh, already said goodbye to Hashimoto. So, uh, yeah, so you just you just got to be careful because you need thyroid hormone for your body to function properly. So I don't recommend that people just stop thyroid hormone because they don't like meds. It's a necessary hormone. It's the battery pack of your body. And so from your brain to your skin all the other body functions they don't work properly without thyroid hormone so if you don't produce it take the medicine to replace it but if you don't need that medicine anymore you're able to lower it it's always a wonderful thing so that would be my advice all right guys it's already it's already time to stop for this week but don't worry there's so much more for you right so number one you got to go to those classes come on just tell everyone you know to just go to the classes and learn the protocol and get healthy right so goodbyelupus.com go see those free classes and learn how to do this right. Learn the protocol, okay? And put it into action, right? Uh, and then I will be back for my Q&A next week. So you'll be able to ask me your questions uh, based off the classes. So they should be really good questions, really well-informed questions based off those classes so that I can help you all through it. And, uh, and as I said, be on the lookout. I will let you all know when the book is ready to be published. It's getting close. I'm so excited. So I will see you next week. We're going to keep working on this. And uh, get that education up and get started. Get healthier over the holidays, all right? I'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks for participating. Bye, Instagram. And bye, YouTube and Facebook.